guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. So today I have a little project for those of you who are um, asking um, about making your own digital journal pages. Those of you who are up to the task. <laughs> um, so I get this question a lot. How do I make my own digital journal pages? And without, you know, starting an, a class on Photoshop yet, it, it's on the list, but this is something in lieu of uh, just for the time being. And this is something that I think anybody can do. You don't have to have Photoshop. You have to have a computer. <laughs> so as long as you have a computer, well, and a printer, you should be able to do this. So the only software you need is uh, if you have a Windows computer will be Paint 3D. And that is a free program that comes um, on any Windows based computer. So if you have Windows 10, but it is free at Microsoft. And as long as you have upgraded to Windows 10 though, I can guarantee it's probably already on your computer, but if not, you can very easily get to it. Um, if you are on a Mac, then you guys have your own paint programs. I think it's Paint 2 or Paint S, some, something like that, where you can kind of edit a little bit and use images. Another thing that anybody can use is GIMP. Dot com and that is an online based freeware and um, I used to use GIMP a long time ago it's been around for ages and it is freeware for anybody to use um, you can donate to to them if you want to but that is not a prerequisite anybody can download um, and use GIMP I will leave a link in the description um, GIMP, it, it's a little bit of a learning curve. Paint 3D is going to be super easy. Um, GIMP is going to be a little bit of a learning curve. I'm not saying you can't do it, but if you don't know how to use any graphic software, you might have to look up some YouTube videos to get you started. And there's also tutorials on GIMP as well. Um, it actually has a lot of things. It's, it's got a lot of things you can do on GIMP you guys might might end up even just loving that. But I just wanted to start out with Paint 3D, which is something that everybody mostly has and super easy to use. So I made a little tutorial. I used my computer and I recorded the screen so that you could see in real time how to use um, images in, in Paint 3D. I'm going to be um, using some new digi kits that I am have gotten some done and I'm working on some others and they are PNG file kits and what those are is those are individual little images but the images have a transparent background so you can overlap them on top of each other and still see around the edges. There's no white background on them or black background or whatever. It's, it's clear and so you can layer things up and, and it looks like it's a 3D image when you're looking at it. So some of the ones that I have done so far is there is some stitches, like messy sewing machine stitches. There is a kit full of 10 different kinds of stitches. I've done um, a florals, hummingbirds. Um, I'm doing some topography. I'll show that to you a little bit. A woodland one I'm working on. There's a whole mess. There's a slew of them, and now I forgot all of them. But there's some already ready at my Etsy store, and that's what I'm going to use to show you easily how to do this. You can use regular JPEG images, but if they have a border, a white background around the image, if it doesn't have a transparent background, it may not layer up nicely. Just, just an FYI. So um, I wanted to show you how to use PNG files and let's go into the computer and look at that and see what that looks like. Then we'll come back and see what we printed. Okay, let's learn how to use some of these PNGs. 
And I've made it simple for you because I have created some page templates in a digital form so that your printer will print out the size of page that it's supposed to be. I've simplified that so you don't have to worry about that. And I've created page templates. So all you have to do is like over here, here's some on the side. So here's an eight and a half by 11. And here's a traveler's notebook size. I've also made an A4 size template. Let me show you the traveler's notebook just real quick. Let's right click. And what you can do, you can either right here where it says edit with paint 3D. If that doesn't show up, you can always go down to open with and then you can choose paint 3D. Once you've done that once or twice, usually it will show up here edit in paint 3d it like tells your computer that that's what you're going to be doing click on either open with paint 3d or edit in paint 3d and that's where it opens it and that's what it's going to look like so you can see that i've put here that the traveler's notebook size is this is the approximate size and so i've added this little box here to kind of show you that area on a regular US sized copy paper. So as it says here, try to keep your page design to the left of this line right here, keeping in mind that your printer will have quarter inch margins at the top and the bottom and over here on this side. And you need to keep any design elements inside there so that it doesn't get cut off by your printer. These top lines will probably get cut off by your printer, <laughs> but that's okay. They're just there for like uh, to help you to stay in those boundaries for now. I can show you how to get rid of that in just a moment. So anyway, this is your template. And all you have to do is you grab your PNG files, whatever kit you have, or maybe you already have PNG files. And we're going to drag them and drop them. So we're going to take our mouse and I want you just to choose one. And I'm just going to choose one of these stitches. I'm going to click and hold down on my left mouse button. And still holding that down, I'm going to drag that over and then let go. And see, and then it drops it right on there. And now it has marching ants around it. And what that means is that it can be edited at this point. This little circle up here, see where it says rotate? So you can rotate this around if you want to make it horizontal. Uh, or vertical either way and then also you can resize just be careful that um, it it doesn't lock it for you so meaning I can make this like really fat and skew it out of proportion so uh, just try to keep it kind of you know however you think it looks right <laughs> does that make sense but you can mess around with it so I'm just gonna put these stitches over here on this side. And then when I'm done messing around with this, I'm going to put my cursor over here in this gray area and click, and then that locks that in. We can reselect this if we want to, because right now you can't do anything with it. It is locked down. The way to be able to mess with this again, let's say you just clicked off of it. One thing you can do is you can go up here to the right, up in the top right where it says undo and click undo and it either takes it away and you can click redo and it'll, and it'll put it back. But if you want to edit it, if you want to move it or change um, the size, then go up to the top and make sure brushes is selected and then over here on the left where it says select that these two things are on and then Go up to like the top right hand corner right above where the stitches are and then just hold your left mouse button down and just pull and drag your marching ants box all the way down to the bottom until they surround what you want to edit and then let go and then that bounding box that edit box comes up again so you can mess with it again the only thing is, is that now it does not have a transparent background. It has this white in behind it. So you selected 
around it and whatever you select around it will be included in here. So if you need to layer it over the top of something else, you're going to have this white border inside. So just keep that in mind. You won't be able to layer it over something and be able to see through the stitches, for example, on this one, because it will have the white background if you reselect it. Now, when you first drag it and drop it, you, you'll be able to see through it because it has a it has a transparent background. So let me show you that. So let's just say we're going to put some stitches along the side of that, that page. And I'm going to grab some. I think I'm going to get one of these images over here on the side. So let's get a mushroom and pull that over. And see, it's really big. And I made these nice and big so that... Um, you could leave it that big if you wanted to, or you could shrink it down a little bit because you don't, you don't need it that big. So I'm going to pull that over here. And again, keep in mind your quarter inch margins. So you'll have to guesstimate on that. And then click off of it. And then there it's locked in. And I'm going to grab another something or other. I'm going to grab this moth. So pull it over. And I'm going to shrink this little guy down. And I'm going to put it over here where he's flying. Like over the, the mushroom. And then click off. And you see how, how it's transparent. So it layers it over the top. So you can even drag another moth. Of course, this kit has, I think there's 10. I think there's 10 moths in, in the moth kit. So you'll be able to uh, choose all kinds of moths. So let me make him a little smaller. And so these guys are just flying around over here. And there, that is locked in. And now I'm going to take some, of, some more stitches and let me drag this box over. And this is like a little rectangle. So I'm just gonna put these stitches over, I don't know, maybe, maybe about there. And I'm going to squeeze those in a bit, about right there. I like that. So now it looks like you stitched over the top of that image, over that graphic. So um, another thing to keep in mind is that if you're going to be uh, binding these into a book, that in the center here, there's going to be you know where you fold it and it'll this will be one side of the page and this will be one side of the page so just keep that in mind if you want something in the fold that's fine but just I wanted to let you know just in case you you know so you had that in your in your head while you're while you're um, making your pages so now let's say I want a little quote in here so just go up to the top see where it says text you click on text and if the uh, this first T is not selected, select it and and because that is your 2D text and that's what you want. And now you can choose a font and there should be quite a few fonts in your uh, font box here. There should be quite a few to choose from. You can always buy fonts off of Etsy too. There's all kinds of places you can buy fonts. So as soon as I chose one, then you can you can uh, choose a size. I'm just going to leave it on 48. And if you look at my cursor here in the middle, you'll see where there's like a text cursor. Uh, so I'm going to drag that down here, and I'm just going to click inside where I want it. And before I start typing, I'm going to move my little marching ants box inside where I want it to be. And now I can start typing without clicking on anything else. You can just move that around but don't click on anything or you'll unselect it so now you can start you can start typing okay and see how it kind of went down here a little bit I don't mind that but if you want to move it around, uh, now will be the time to do that. And right now it's, it's got the cursor, so it thinks you want to type. So you can't move it 
really while you're typing. So what you do is move your cursor over to where it turns into, see the little cross hatches? And now you can drag it. You can drag it anywhere you want. Look what happens if I try to make the box smaller. It, it, it doesn't work. It, it cuts off your words. Um, another thing you can do, let's you're like, oh no, it's too big. So while these ants are still marching, and while you still have your cursor, put your cursor at the front, the, the first letter or at the end, and click and drag and select all that. And then you can go back up here and choose something smaller. The only bad thing is, is that these are the only sizes you have to choose from. So yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of stinky, but you know, what do you do? Now you can shrink it down a little bit. I'm going to click off of that and there it is. It's, it's done. Now let's say, I'm like, oh, I, but I want that just a little tiny, tiny bit bigger. Well, make sure brushes is selected and the select again, and go over here and very carefully drag and pull those marching ants around your script. And now, ooh, you can make it bigger. But if you try to make it too big, see what it does? It takes that white background with it and it'll cover up whatever you make it, you know, too big for. So that's the only thing that you really need to remember is that at this point, you can move it around and you can reshape it and resize it, but it has the white background now. So just keep that in mind. So there you go. Isn't that great? So kind of awesome. So let's say you want to print this, but you don't want these lines in here, these, these lines and these words. It's really super easy. All you have to do again is have the select and the brushes and you can click and drag over the top and then right click and hit delete and that's gone. So that won't be printed. And then you can click and drag over that line, right click, delete, and that's gone. So you can keep deleting things. Just make sure not to get you know, over any of your elements because you can delete those too. But that's kind of how you like erase things. Right click, delete. Another thing you can do since the brushes is selected is you can go over here and like choose the first one, choose a marker. And then you can choose how big you want your, you know, your circle to be. And then if you go down here and you click on the white, then you can erase things with the white because your page is white. Does that make sense? Okay, and let's say you made a mistake and you caught it right away. Remember I talked about this undo button up here. Just go up here and hit undo, undo. I think you can do it up to 10 times. I think in the history it will keep 10 clicks. So see, so I, I put that all back. And then let's say, you oh, I went too far. I didn't want those words. Then you can skip over here and see where it says redo. Hit that and it'll just redo what you just undid. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous. Okay, so let me drag one more thing over. Let's drag these ferns over. Ooh, those are too big. I'm gonna squeeze that down just a little bit. I'm gonna scoot it over here. And right now it has a transparent background, so we're okay and it'll overlap anything I want it to overlap. And that's where I want it and I'm done. So that's gonna be it. So um, now all you have to do is print it out. When you're using the, the regular US copy paper size or the European, the A4 size, um, you don't have to worry about, of course, making sure everything is short like like this short page the only thing you have to make sure is keep your keep your elements inside the quarter inch printer boundary all the way around the perimeter unless you have a printer that prints borderless then you can mess with it but you know what just mess around with it and see I don't know what your printer is I don't know I don't know so you know your printer or, or maybe you don't but that's okay you don't have to so you can play around with that and but just keep that in mind to keep your elements within that quarter inch margin all the way around, especially on the other two. So let's print this, save it, both of those things. So we're going to go over to the top left over here, see where it says menu, I'm going to hit menu and you can save it at this point. So if you hit save as, then you're going to hit image 
and then it's going to bring up a box and it's going to ask you where you want to save it. So if you want to save it on your desktop, if there's a folder on your desktop that you made where you want to put it, you can name it whatever you want and then just save it right here where it says 2D JPEG. That's fine. That's what you save it as. So then you just hit save. So let's let's print it now. So if we go to menu and then you go to print and we're going to want to 2D print and so click on that and then that's going to pull up your printing options box. Now for the most part I'm going to say that it's going to pull it up in the portrait orientation which these are not in portrait these are landscape so change it to landscape and then you'll see that it, it looks more like what this looks like. Um, here is your paper size. So those of you in the US, if you're um, printing on paper that is regular copy size paper, but you can pull that down. And those of you that have uh, A4 um, for your template for the A4 size in, in other parts of the world, that's your standard copy size. You can choose that. You know, there's all kinds of sizes, but I'm going to suggest that you either leave it on the, the letter or the A4 um, because that's what your printer is going to know and that's what it's going to print out. So I'm going to leave it on letter. And then for alignment, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to hit, you can hit center if you're on any of the other pages. But if you're on this traveler's notebook page, then, oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. Leave it to either top left, oops, I did it again, <laughs> or bottom left. Either one of those, it, it's just orients it to the left side of the page. If you center, you can center it, you can, but then your page will be off center in the middle and you'll have to measure out your, your uh, traveler's notebook size, which I mean, isn't a problem. You're going to have to trim the paper either way. Let's see, what else does it say? Oh, you can choose color. So if you just want to print in black and white or color, and then in the more settings, this will depend on your computer but you can choose the type of paper that you're going to be printing on. You can choose the tray. If your printer has more than one tray, you can choose that. And then you can choose paper quality. So again, according to your, your printer, you'll be able to choose whatever quality. Um, and then see, I have borderless. So I could choose that here if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I think that is it. I'll just hit OK. And then it saves all that. And then all you have to do is hit print. And then it prints out. And you can print it on tea stain paper. You can print it on parchment paper. You can print it on I mean, anything, any kind of paper you got. Just <laughs> you, print, you can print it on uh, printable vellum, all, whatever you want to print on. Um, because there is a white background, that will stay all clear. And the only thing that's going to print is is the images and the stitch lines and, you know, just the images part. So that is that. So I know it's not Photoshop, but it's pretty stinking cool, right? Pretty stinking cool because, you know, not everybody wants to go out and spend a decade learning Photoshop. <laughs> I don't blame you. You just have to abide by a few rules like I you know if you go ahead and place your object and then you reselect it it's not going to have the transparent background anymore you could always erase it and then pull another one over you know pull the same one over again and just redo it if you mess up right just hit undo and erase it and you know so that's always an option um, I will try and provide as many PNG file kits as I can um, but just start looking around there are other there are other digital artists that sell PNG files so look around and see what you need see what you can you can find with all the PNG kit um, with all of the PNG kits there will be the page templates in those automatically so you don't have to pay extra for those. They're just going to be there so that you can use them. And you don't have to buy, 
you know, maybe one kit has it and then the next kit doesn't. Nope, they're all going to have it. It's all going to be in there. So no worries. You can play around with Paint 3D or if you have a Mac, you can play around with Paint S or Paint 2, whatever it is, and see if you can drag and drop and layer things over. And if you want to tackle GIMP, go for it. You can also use PNG files in like uh, like Cricut Design Space and Silhouette and Cameo. They all have um, things that you can use PNG files in. I am not familiar with those very much. I have Cricut Design Space, but that's all I've got. And I know I can use PNG files in there. So you can play around with that. And let's see. Um, if you have Photoshop Elements, you can absolutely use these templates and PNG files in there. And even if you aren't sure how to use Photoshop Elements, which is the baby brother or baby sister, however you want to put it, to Photoshop, um, very, very reasonably priced. And you can get that at Best Buy or you can download it from Adobe anytime. And it's very inexpensive. And um, you can use these templates in there as well very easily and so even if you are unsure how to make a journal page in in Photoshop Elements if, let's say you just got it and you're like I don't even know where to begin these will absolutely work so no worries and then you can just print them off through Photoshop let me show you something else that's kind cool so I'm going to take the eight and a half by eleven page template and right click and open that with paint 3d and of course you can open it with Photoshop Elements if that's what you have. Or Let's say I want to do like a really pale ghosted image in the back. Let me show you an example. So let me drag and drop this love letter on to the page. And I'm going to kind of squeeze it down so it, it's only going to be on half, half the page here. And I'll just kind of put it down toward this bottom right hand side there we go just make sure I keep my uh, printer boundaries and I clicked off of that so what I'm going to do to kind of make this um, fade away a little bit is if you if you have brushes selected you can come over here and you can choose some of these brush tips and what these are is you'll be able to paint over them. So I'm going to choose the marker and I'm going to take the thickness all the way up and I'm going to take the opacity down to about I don't know, 50 percent and I'm going to choose the white because I want the white but look what happens when I paint over the words. It just kind of fades it back and so I'm just going to run my cursor back and forth over these letters these words and I'm just gonna scrub all the way down to the bottom and you're like okay that's cool but I want more so now I just take it down even further um, so that it doesn't erase everything so let's do like 25 percent and now I'm gonna paint over again and it just mutes it down and erases some of that and it makes it more of a ghosted behind the scenes kind of an image and you can go over just parts of it and erase some of it away and make it look like it's uh, some of it's worn away on the edges or you could do this with any of the images you could even take an image of of a moth and do the same thing there's like sheet music that you can put over the top you can erase part of that away and make it look all worn like it's like it's been um, degraded over time and the sun has faded part of it so that's kind of like what it looks like ghosted now if I pull let's pu pull these rose hips over the top about like that and just kind of squeeze these down a little bit and see and then the words are underneath um, that image and that's how it will print out and if I wanted something a little bit more precise I definitely use the marker I'm just gonna scrub away some of this rose because maybe I don't want those rose hips like super bright I just kind of want them to fade away a little bit 
where you can fade them away with these different things up here at the top. Just play around with it and some of the things you're going to like and some of the things you 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 might hate. So, but it doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't cost anything to play around with it. Here's the eraser if you need to erase anything. Here's a calligraphy pen if you want to if you want to write. Of course you'd need you'd need a color, but you can totally write your own stuff on your page as well. You don't have to type it if you want to let me take the take the thickness up a little bit if you want to be able if you're pretty good with uh with a mouse or if you have a drawing tablet um you can you know write something cool on the page it kind of looks like calligraphy it's actually pretty stinking good uh, you could sign your initials at the bottom there's all kinds of things you could do so that's kind of fun and that's kind of fun too it's just a little extra little extra effect you can add. There's all kinds of different things. I suggest going to YouTube and seeing what other things in Paint 3D that you can do that maybe you might want to do. <laughs> um, I don't have time to go through all of it because I don't know and I don't know what everybody's going to want anyway. But I just thought I would show you a few things that those of us as bookmakers as junk journalers the stuff that we're going to want to make our own journal pages okay i hope you guys liked that um this was just the little screenshot recording part and um i will show you what these look like when they print out so fairly easy right this is the one that we did on the traveler's notebook size page and of course i went ahead and i erased that uh, little border that I had put in there, the little cheater border and the words, I erased all that so that it wouldn't print out on the page. And so now all I have to do is just trim this side and that'll be it. And I can fold it up and it'll be a traveler's notebook size. Um, this is one that I did with some stitches and this is just on a regular eight and a half by 11 copy paper but of course you could also do a four this is one that I printed one of the PNG files on a dictionary page now to be able to print on a dictionary page or a book page or something other than just a piece of, of copy paper um, I would get it close, get one that's close to the size of a piece of copy paper. Like this one was 11 inches long. It's just barely, barely, barely narrower. So I attached it to a another piece of paper just at the bottom where it feeds into the printer. And then when I drug and dropped my image onto um, my template in Paint 3D, I just made sure that it was up a little bit it was the image was kind of skewed up this way a little bit so that it wouldn't be printing down here and get off the page of course if it did it would just get on your on your white paper in the back so and I happened to use a heavier paper more a cardstock I didn't use just copy paper I used some cardstock it seems to feed it through better so so you can even print print on dictionary pages um, all kinds of things scrapbook paper, maps, ledger paper, all kinds of stuff. You can print on anything you can think of, anything that your printer will take. Vellum, the printable vellum. Um, you could print and then do the glassine technique. But this is just um, an easy-ish way to make your own journal pages. There's literally endless combinations that you could use to make an unlimited amount of designs for your own journals. And you could save the pages in folders and print them out later so that you don't have to remake them. <laughs> um, oh, there's just so many things you can do. And I will be getting more into this um, as time goes on. More tricks, more little things that I can think of that Paint 3D will do and GIMP will do that um, will be easy for you guys to pick up and, and utilize in your own 
journal making, your own book making, so that you can make your own pages. And yeah, that, which is kind of fun, right? And I know a lot of you wanted to get into this. You want to get into some, some baby steps into graphic art and some digital work. As I mentioned in the video, um, if you don't know, if you can use a PNG file on your computer, just go to my Flickr page. The link is down below the video. Grab the pink rose. It should be the last one there. Of course, unless you're watching this in a month and it probably won't be, but there's a pink rose and it's a PNG file. So just grab that and download it. There will also be a link down below to a little section of a video where I show how to download from Flickr if you don't know how. So I will also add that just in case. Um, there's a lot of new people. Hi guys, <laughs> it's good to have you here. And um, a lot of people, don't know what Flickr is or they've never downloaded from Flickr. So basically all Flickr is, it's not social media, it's not, it's just a repository to dump your photos and images. Do you guys remember Photo Bucket? It probably is even still around. I used to use Photo Bucket too, you know, in days gone by. I probably still have an account over there somewhere. But Flickr's just a, you know, it's a repository for images. That's all it is. You do not have to have an account to download anything, so no worries. So I'll put that down there. You can download that, that PNG image and see what you can do. You can play around with that and see how that works on your computer um, before you attempt to buy somebody's PNG files or you know before you put any money into it. I want you to try it out if you're not sure, okay? So one thing that's gonna make this easier for you is that there are the templates that I mentioned in the video that you start with. And the templates are, basically they are a page in digital form that you start with. So it's the correct dimensions, whether it's the US sized copy paper or it's A4 or it's the traveler's notebook size. That's what you open first whether it's in Paint 3D or GIMP or Photoshop Elements or whatever, you open that first and that is your building foundation. That's what you put everything on and then you know that everything is gonna end up uh, in the right area. It's gonna end up being the right dimensions when it prints out because that's one thing that stymies a lot of people and that that you hit a wall is that you open up a program like Photoshop Elements and it's like, okay, so I know I want my paper to be eight and a half by 11, but I have no idea what this DPI means. I have no idea what, how to save it as the correct format so that it'll print out properly. Well, all that is done for you because all you have to do is open up the template and build on top of it and print it out. And you can also save it before you print it or after you print it either way. And then you can print it out as many times as you'd like. All right, guys, thank you so much. I, I hope you enjoyed this little, this little tutorial of sorts. And those of you who are interested in getting into digital art, I hope this helps you to take that first step and to jump into the deep end of the pool. Those of you that have Photoshop elements, you can already use these in your Photoshop elements or Photoshop because there's the templates are already in there. You don't have to worry about sizing the page or anything. Pretty soon I will be having an, some more kits with some more templates that aren't included in, in these. So they're gonna be different, different templates. But these are just for journal pages, but there will be other templates coming out very soon. I just gotta finish the stuff that goes with them. So, and I'm editing that class. Okay, that's a lie. I've filmed it and I've collated and I've gotten everything labeled, but I haven't edited yet. Not like opened up the videos and trimmed them down and I haven't done that part yet. I'm working on it. It will most likely be the last class of the year, I'm thinking. I got a lot of company coming, so I don't know, unless some other little snippet snippet comes along that I can do quickly, but this is a big class. It's gonna be teaching two different ways to make a cover. It's just, it's a lot. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a lot. It's daunting. So all the files are in there and they just like, they're mocking me. I got to get in there and get those done. Okay. I will. I will. I promise. I promise. I promise. I will. All right, guys. Thank you so much for um, hanging out with me for a minute today. And I hope these, I hope this helps you. You might even have some files in your computer already. You could just start throwing them together in Paint 3D and see what, see what happens. All right, guys. I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.